Hey friends, today I want to talk to you about scraping training data for your mind. Shout out to Henry Carson from Escaping Flatland for, for the title. So this thought came about about like two weeks ago when we were uh, renovating, uh, like laying some flooring uh, at my girlfriend's parents. It was a good time and I just found that like the, 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 the nature of the work and like doing manual labor for a change really like let my brain like run in the back and process some stuff. and. You know, one of the big things about the the paper in six weeks projects and was my takeaway that I need to just like read a lot more papers, right? Because I just felt that it didn't have the notes or like the ammunition or the roadmap of the field in my head to work from. And that felt pretty crippling. Now this thought also occurred before I kind of made my big overarching PhD plan that I made the video about. So, you know, if you don't have an overarching plan, like a story for your PhD, I highly recommend you make one. If you are a bit too early there, like in, in your in your project to kind of have this big picture and, and you're just like kind of picking up a field from scratch, then this framing might help you kind of make that a bit easier. So what I basically, the problem I had was that I didn't really have an intuitive understanding of how good management research is done. And, you know, it sounds a bit strange, right? Because like empirical research, right? Like you just have a, like take some theory, make some hypotheses, and then you like construct some measures and then you blah, 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 and then results, right? What I didn't have a good intuition for is how to connect you know, your real world observational data to this theoretical abstract debate in the literature. And I just find this really hard because I come from fields where this is not a problem, right? Like I'm a mathematician, mathematics is all on the abstract level. And then I switched over to machine learning and machine learning is all about the observation level. And then this connection is just something that I find very unintuitive. And lacking this connection really like harms your ability to kind of like brainstorm about research and like to conceptualize the ideas. Um, because like, you know, this is kind of the whole game of quantitative empirical research is that like you just have a theory and then you're like, hey, what would be a good real world setting to test this? And then you just like get that data. Or of course, like sometimes you go from the other direction. Hey, here is some cool data. What questions could I answer with this? And then this connection for me was really hard. And also this is kind of like this, to, to just set the stage, right? Like, yeah, we are, we are a few minutes in, but like this is kind of like the stage that we are looking at. And I've been kind of like wrestling this for a while now because I don't want to be just like reading randomly, right? It's just not good because then it just leads to like, hey, you read something and then it, you don't really find a value for it. And it's like a negative feedback loop and it makes you less likely to read, which is like the last thing you want to do. Uh, as we learned over the whole paper in six weeks period. So like this was kind of the problem I was facing. And as we were kind of like, you know, like cutting down the little PVC floors and like hammering them into place, I, at, at one point we were just like taking a break or maybe we were even finished for the day. And I just like opened up my, 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 in my uh, readvise, read it later stack. And then I saw an article mentioned, which was titled scraping training data for your mind. And I will link it below. Uh, it's by Henry Carson of uh, Escaping the Flatland. Has an amazing stop stack. Really like his work. And it basically just explained this idea that before you can kind of make judgments about stuff, like the like the example he gives was was his wife wanting to get into gardening and like how to make gardens nice, and then. When you start out, you have absolutely no idea about kind of like how to even think about gardens, right? It's like, oh yeah, there are like plants in it, but like there are plants in that corner. Is it a garden? No, but like I, the only reason I know that is because I have a concept of a garden. And then he just explained that his wife started off by reading books about gardening, but then quickly realized that like that's not really the best way to pick this up. So then she went to people who are really good at looking at gardens which is like critiques and competitions. And then by observing how people who are really good at doing the skill you want to do, you can pick up the tacit knowledge, like, you know, like this, this intangible, unexplainable knowledge that they have of the process much better than if you would ask them to explain it to you. Okay, so this was a really complicated sentence. I apologize. It's like eight... 35 which means that i should be in bed by now 
but uh, but I'm not. I'm here making this video, so we will just have to work with it. The bottom line is that if you want to learn a skill from an expert, you are much better at watching them do the skill than asking them to explain the skill. Because, you know, there is this whole like Dreyfus model of skill acquisition. You can read Pragmatic Thinking and Learning by Andy Hunt. I will link it below. I like that book a lot. But the, the main thing is that like experts learn by repetition and then it's just like all intuition for them and they can't really explain it. So when someone wants to write a book about a skill, then they will try to condense a lot of intuition into explicit instruction and that usually doesn't go particularly well. So you're much better off going for like, you know, the source and watching them work. So in the in the blog post, the example here really was like, hey, let's look at read critiques about gardens. Like, hey, here is a picture of a garden and then let's read what a critique read about it, like wrote about it. And then by looking at like, hey, here is the input, here is the desired output, you can look at it as, Training data, yay, machine learning for your brain. And I realized that this is the solution to my what to read problem. I spent a lot of time like torturing language models, trying to teach me how to do this, right? Like how to connect theory to literature. And I also asked the random blue sky and then I got some really good replies, but most of the replies were like either super meta, like, oh, think about what you want to do and what kind of researcher you want to be, which is, you know, do think about that. And the other half was like, read papers. And then like, obviously that's like pretty trivial advice, right? Like, yeah, read some papers and then like, read review papers if you want to catch up on theory. But it didn't help me to connect the dots between, you know, the theory and the, the, the context and the real world. And this essay, this idea of like training data for your mind made me realize what the solution here is. And what you have to do is kind of like read the great papers in whatever field you're in. Identify what type of research you want to do. You know, for me, that is quantitative empirical management research. That means that there is a theory and then you find an example, observational data, and then you do some statistics on it and then you draw conclusions from that right for me i had to identify the best quantitative empirical management papers that are currently out there and read them and by doing that you know those might be completely unrelated to my theory or my field or my context but by observing some of the best scholars in the world making this connection like hey here is this theoretical argument here is how we connect it to the to the the empirical setting and then see their arguments see how they do it it kind of trains your mind to do the same and i've only read like a few of these big papers but like i became quite liberal i just opened up some of the best journals in our field and then just like started being like most cited and then of course you discard reviews and editorials because i don't want that i want proper empirical papers nothing against reviews of course but like you know for the sake of the argument and i just started reading them and then seeing more and more of this step being done like outlining the theory and then bringing it down to the level of the of the empirical setting is just like, I can actively feel it like rewire my brain. Like it's really like training data, right? Like this is the whole idea that like, hey, look at what this step you want to make and then just like see how they do it. And then you just feed enough of this into your brain and it's gonna pick it up. And to me, this helped a lot in solving the what to read problem and also I really wish that I had this outlook when I started out in this PhD because I spent a lot of time like sc again scouring around the internet trying to find like a guide how to do empirical research and it's all felt super vague and nonsense and this is I do believe that this is the main way how you can pick up this skill you know, of course, like you can do it, like learning by doing, right? Like you can just do it and then submit a paper and then get rejected and then be like, okay, you got rejected. But like you can iterate probably much faster if you read papers and not write them. Yeah. So I realized that I really wish that like I had this information when I started out as a V first year PhD. Uh, and I hope it might help you. I, I really do. Because to me, it's like a big relief. And do read the, do read the, read the original essay because it's absolutely amazing. And he probably explains the concept much clearer than I did. So um, that's it for this week. Thanks for coming and I will see you next time.